We welcome to the program now Jill Savage. She is a uh, Blaze TV contributor, uh, and following this story, this is going to be um, breaking news all day. Uh, we don't believe anyone else will cover it. That's why it is so crucial that um, we cover it and you spread the news, or, um, or honestly, America just goes down another road that is unthinkable. The FBI arrested um, a Blaze TV reporter. Jill, what do you know so far? Well, we know that he is going to be appearing in court at 10 a.m. He has already self-surrendered uh, at 7 a.m. this morning. They handcuffed him. And this is a, it's, it's interesting because we think that there are going to be four misdemeanor charges, right? That's what they've told us so far. We don't know that for a fact, right? He has not right. been told the charges up until this point. They said because they were scared that he would tweet out the charges. Well, at some point, this is all going to become public record. So they're also afraid, he's afraid, that it is three or four misdemeanors. How many misdemeanors? Four. Four, four misdemeanors. But they feel that, uh, he feels that they are going to use those four misdemeanors um, to as uh, enticement. You just say you did wrong. Otherwise, we bump it up to a felony. But for the life of me, I cannot understand what what even the misdemeanors are. You know, they, they were parading. What were some of the other ones that they charged people with? He's not parading. He went as a journalist, and we have, and we'll show you in a few minutes, we just got in the middle of the night from uh, Barry Loudermilk's office and the Speaker of the House. He Those two have been just amazing. Um they got all of the tape of uh, of Steve reporting in the Capitol on January 6th. And so we have all of the scene. I, I think there might be a couple more minutes. I don't know. Uh, we don't know how complete it is, but it's fairly complete of him in the Capitol that day just reporting. And our understanding is from the Capitol that there is no parading. There's nothing but journalism, taking photographs, taking video, uh, and reporting. Yeah, Steve Baker is a Blaze Media reporter now, but on the day of January 6th, when he went into the Capitol building, he was an independent reporter. He said he went in just trying to document the day. He didn't know what January 6th was going to turn into. He just followed the story where it went. He was outside with the crowd and said, okay, a lot of people are going in the building. Let me go see what's going on in there. And from that... They are now turning his life into hell. And you can see that they are not just going out. And he said they could easily just have said in order to appear in front yes. of the court today. But that's not what they did. They put an actual arrest warrant out for him. Uh, and and Steve this week had asked his lawyer, why are they doing this to me? And I said his lawyer looked at him and he said, you know why they're doing this to you. <laughs> You've poked them for three years. That's the other point. They've been doing this to him for almost three years now. In December of, of 2023, they said an arrest warrant would be imminent. They've been making him wait and wait yeah. for these charges to come down. He's just living his life thinking, okay, what so, time is this going to happen to me? When you know people have been uh, railroaded and if they didn't cooperate, they got 20 years, 20 years. This is like a cancer um, uh, diagnosis. Can you imagine the doctor saying, you might have cancer, you might be fine. Here, I'm going to give you the results of your test. They're imminent any day now. And then you wait two and a half years. That's the, They are making the process the punishment because they don't have anything. And so they're making, they're setting an example by scaring everyone. And I swear to you, America, if you don't wake up on this one, if these reporters, if these journalists don't report this, may God have mercy on your soul for what you've done to the republic. This is a journalist that is being arrested, and you say nothing? May God have mercy on your soul. So they arrested him. Now, they told him to show up in shorts and sandals, right? Right. Right. Which you can't, just can't picture. I, I, I told him, I can't picture you in flip-flops. He does not look like a man who has ever worn flip-flops in his entire life. No. 
in, in theoretically, right? It's to make it easier just to put the orange jumpsuit on and, and put the chains on and, yeah. and go through, right? Uh-huh. They want to they wanna make this as humiliating as possible. This is not just, here, let's do X, Y, and Z. Let's go through, buy the book, let's do this. No, we want to humiliate you, and that's why we're telling you not what charges you're facing, but we're telling you to show up in shorts and flip-flops. So mm-hmm. this is what happened about an hour ago. Do we have the video of... Steve, there's Steve. We're going to show you. There's Not wearing a, shorts and flip-flops, no, notably. He, he yeah. went in a suit, um, and he's on his way to the FBI. There's a first picture of him. Do we have the video of him being handcuffed? That's all we have right now. Um, but he was, I am told, I have not seen the video. I am told that he was uh, he was leaned up against the car, and then his face was pushed down onto the oh, on. onto the hood. And he was handcuffed. They're going to put leg irons on him and an orange jumpsuit. Now, for four misdemeanors, why do you need leg irons? It's all the humiliation game. Right. And that's and that's exactly what it, everything is going back to. None of this needed to happen the way that it is. I hope that that is what people take away from today. None of this needed to happen this way. It could have been in order to appear in front of the court. It didn't have to be an arrest. It didn't have to be in an orange jumpsuit. It didn't have to be with the chains. Right. But they're doing this for show. You know, he told me yesterday, Glenn, <sighs> that the fifth person to breach the Capitol building, the fifth, was a New York Times journalist. Who went through a the window, window. A broken window. The fifth one. Now, look, I am not at all advocating that the New York Times journalist who went in there should be arrested. He no. should not. Uh, no. uh, quite clearly, this was a story worth uh, covering. covering, and it's Im- it's vitally important we have video that Steve took, which, by the way, was then used by documentaries, by HBO, by by the House, um, yeah, uh, the uh, whatever that council, uh, the committee the was, committee that committee of clowns, the committee of clowns that went after everybody. Uh, th- they used his footage, and now they're going to arrest him for taking it. It is incomprehensible what they're doing. He said that there's a possibility that they get him on some sort of crossing state lines because he crossed state lines and then sold the video. It's like, what What? <laughs> what kind of law is that? I've never even heard of that. Well, they use the Commerce Clause for anything, as yeah, you know. I know. You know I know. Okay, so you're on your way down to the courthouse. Yes, right? I will be there. I will be there today and reporting back with whatever whatever comes out of the courthouse today. Okay, thank you so much. Thanks, Glenn. Appreciate it. I have done this job since 1978. I have never seen anything like this. I believe they left Steve alone for two years. He was not a Blaze TV correspondent. They left him alone. They first contacted him, and they had nothing, literally nothing. He is a journalist, an independent journalist when he was at the Capitol. He did not engage in anything. The guy's a libertarian. He wasn't for Trump. He, he, wasn't, he wasn't for anybody. He was an independent journalist. There are, I think, 60 journalists that were on Capitol Hill that day. Now the federal government, as soon as he joined us and started putting his stuff out and it got eyeballs, all of a sudden, they're after him. And I don't think this is, um, I mean, I, I know they need him to stop because he's the guy who has revealed everything. We're getting down to the Kamala Harris stuff. He told me yesterday some things that he's working on. And he said, Glenn, there are other people who know it. Uh, Other people have my work in case I uh, become suicidal in jail. He said, uh, and he told me a story I'm not going to tell you. Um, He told me a story. If he can prove this, I mean, it's game changing. This is the clip of him. Is this the clip of him in the Capitol? being handcuffed. Here he is, uh, the clip of him being handcuffed today. If you're watching Blaze TV. 
gotta be kidding me. Look at that. Perp walk. This is the nicest, quietest, gentlest man I know. It's incredible. Unbelievable. The charges are as follows. Uh, knowingly entering or remaining in any restricted building or grounds without lawful authority. Now, that's one he's talked about. And he said, you know, look, I'm a, I'm a journalist. And I know, even as a journalist, the New York I, Times was there. I'm not allowed to be in these, biz, these buildings, even if I'm um, covering these stories. However, uh, the fifth person through a broken window to enter the Capitol was a New York Times journalist, and they are not being charged. And he didn't enter through a broken window. The other two charges are three charges. Quickly. Disorderly and disruptive conduct in a restricted didn't building happen. or grounds. Disorderly conduct in the Capitol building. Didn't happen. Parading, demonstrating, or picketing in a Capitol building. Didn't happen. We are waiting now in front of the... Uh, the Justice Building, if you can call it that, uh, the courthouse here in Dallas. Uh, one of our colleagues has been arrested today for January 6th. Um, could we just play the the footage that we got from the Capitol uh, last night? Uh, there, I mean, look at this. He Steve is in this footage in the Capitol from January 6th. He is up against the wall right there. He's either writing or he is checking the pictures on his camera to make sure he's gotten the shots that he wants. Not he's, even looking at what's going on he at is, that point. He's writing. Yeah, he's not engaged in anything other than writing or something. Uh, and then soon he's going to move around the crowd and he's going to stand in a doorway doing exactly the same thing except taking pictures. Doesn't look very disorderly. No. To me? No. He's no. just texting or writing Not a writing whole lot of parading. Notes. His tripod is actually up against the wall. <laughs> Have you seen all of this footage? No, we, we've only got, like, you heard the congressman tell No, no, you, no. I mean, have you seen all five minutes of this? Oh, one? yeah. It's boring as snot. It's very it? boring. It's, <laughs> it's, uh, I could see why the FBI didn't want to look at this. I mean, this is not parading. He's not even engaged with the crowd. He sits, he's leaning against the wall as the crowd passes by, and it takes notes. We've seen him try to document the events that are going on. But, like, people in front of him are cheering, waving their flags. He's just leaning against the wall. Writing. Writing. And taking photographs and videos. Mm -hmm. Uh... <laughs> This is this is insane. But then again, this is this is not the only journalist. Uh, the other journalist that all other journalists seem to have turned their back on uh, is uh, Catherine Erdge. She was at CBS, right? She was just fired. She's been all over. She's worked at Fox, ABC, yeah. NBC, Fox, mm -hmm. uh, and she was at CBS. They just fired her. And now she is facing jail time because she won't reveal the source of a witness. And uh, that witness that whistleblowed to her was whistleblowing on how there is an infiltration in our universities from China. And the government wants to know who her source was. And so they're putting her in jail. What a surprise it has something to do with China. Hmm? So that's two journalists in jail today. Ricky, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Jill. Um, Jill Savage is down at the courthouse, and she's. we're waiting for Steve to come out, but what is the situation? Have you heard, Jill? Yeah, I did. I was just up in the room with Steve Baker as he was going through his arraignment. He was there with four uh, four defendants walked in. Steve, it was nice enough uh, that they were letting him wear his blue dress pants and dress shirts. So the orange jumpsuit that we were talking about earlier on the show, Glenn, did not happen, but oh. he was indeed shackled at his wrists and ankles. Steve looked over at us as he walked in to the to the courthouse and, and definitely showed uh, those those shackles there on his wrists and ankles. And 
Steve, it is going to be known that he will be released sometime today. They were asked that. The government lawyer said that that was fine, that that was going to be part of, of today's proceedings. Um, and then he will be set to appear in court in the District of Columbia on March 14th at 12.30 Eastern Standard. So and that will be the next thing that we should look for for Steve Baker. Do we know the judge, Stu, in the... Um in the charges, it was signed by a District of Columbia judge. We should look up the judge. Is that the hanging judge? In the, I mean, he's going into territory now where, he, you know, good luck getting a fair trial. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that was one of the things that the, the lawyers definitely knew what they were getting in for today. We were able to speak with them just briefly uh, before they went up into the courtroom. But that is now the unknown, is what happens when things do get to the District of Columbia on March 14th. Uh, tell Steve that I talked to Alan Dershowitz today, and uh, Alan is uh, willing to get involved uh, pro bono to help him uh, for free speech cases. This isn't the only one, unfortunately, that is now popping up.